Goblin Eagles softball look to continue to fly high coming out of spring break. Welcome to Sportswire, I'm Will Catterley. The Eagles went into the break sitting at a perfect 4-0 on the young season, and that includes three shutout victories as well. Led by junior starting pitcher Caitlin Hudley, the Eagles have been dominant and would attempt to continue that streak at home against Prince George. So it's the Eagles taking on the Royals of Prince George at Godwin. The aforementioned Caitlin Hubley on the mound, straight up dealing in the first. Strike him out, sit him down. She had great command on her fastball and her rise ball. Change up as well. Meanwhile, bottom one, Anna Grace Howe. A.G. Howe with the walk and then the steal. So runner in scoring position for this. Ground ball booted by the shortstop. Would have been a tough play. How comes home to score. And, uh, yeah, pitcher helping herself right there in Hubley, and it's a 1-0 Goblin lead. They would not be done in the bottom half of the inning. That dog will hunt. Base hit. Puts runners on third, runners on second, runners on first. A gaggle of eagles on the base paths, if you will, and would lead to this wild pitch. That will work to score another eagles run. They would play two in the inning and jump out to an early 2 to nothing lead. More than enough for Hubley, who was straight up dealing. Strike him out, sit him down, gets the K looking inside corner. That'll work. How about some heat right down Broadway? Gets the strike out there. Hubley still not finished later. Rise ball right at you. Say, if it's over your head, don't swing at it, but you don't know until it's too late. A lot of velocity. Swing and a miss, strike three, and she was using everything. Fastball, rise ball, change up, but fastball was just dynamite, though. A lot of velocity comes on you quick. Good movement as well. Hubley still dealing. Still 2 nothing. Strike him out, sit him down. I mean, she had double-digit Ks on the afternoon. The straw that stirs the drink for Godwin in the circle. Getting it done in a big way right after spring break. Another strikeout. No rust on Hubley's arm, that's for sure. Godwin Lady Eagles going to do some more work with the bats as well. Runner on, that's a base hit. Number six doing the honors, Lady Poulos, and two runners on later. Rise ball, good eye, does not swing. That is ball four, and now more gaggles of Eagles on the base pass. Bases are full of Lady Eagles leading to this. Ground ball to short, cannot make the play in time. That plates home a run that would make it three nothing Godwin at that point. Lady Eagles were not finished. That was off the bat of Mackenzie White. Sophomore, hit it hard. This ball's hit hard as well. Carter Dunham, line drive single, plates another. Eagles, more than enough runs for Hubley. Godwin stays unbeaten. Five nothing is your final. Meanwhile, on the baseball diamond, the Freeman Mavericks would look to improve to 4-2 on the road at Hermitage. And while your team is what the record says it is, numbers can be misleading. The Mavericks' only two losses were each by just one run. With a back-to-back -back on the schedule with Mechanicsville to play on the very next day, Freeman's plan was to get out in front of the Panthers early and often. So to Hermitage High School we go, Nick Sweet on the mound. Line drive, fly ball, and what a catch! Great job by Hermitage's Jordan O'Brien. Sweet has great stuff, by the way, the Hermitage starting pitcher. It's just the control. When it's off, that's a problem. When it's on, great velocity, excellent changeup. You'll see some of that in these highlights. It's good fastball right down Broadway, though, and that is hit hard by Jackson Rogish. That would play at home Ryder Warren of the Storm. And uh, Freeman would have the one nothing lead bottom, or one, say. Make that, yeah, top one, I should say. Either way, Freeman scoring early and often. That pass ball allows Cross Kingsbury to score wild pitch, whichever way they ruled it. And this ball is hit a ton off the bat of came in good, and he's feeling good. He drives home one, two, Freeman Mavericks. And uh, yeah, Mavs are off and running, getting off to a good start. Meanwhile, their pitcher, nice velocity on that fastball. Peyton Beal towing the mound for the Mavs. And then how about Uncle Charlie? Caught him looking, strike him out, sit him down. 
Freeman in good shape. We're going to add on to their early lead, but a nice drop curveball in there by Nick Sweet, and that was Sweet. And he gets out of trouble in this inning as well. So when his command's on, good pitch, really good. It's uh, just getting the command. Easier said than done. Hermitage trying to make things happen on their half of the inning. Later in this one, number 19 with a seeing eye single to right. Later, he's at second base. But strike him out, sit him down. They got him on the curve ball, does Beal. And Freeman still maintaining a 4-0 advantage. Looking to add on Sweet with another sweet breaking ball. Gets number six, Ryan Bland, to strike out. However, that would be ball four. So Freeman with the bases loaded. That brings home Kamen good. Scores a run. Now Mavs up 5-0. They'd go to the bullpen. Inside corner, fastball, got him. Hermage with the strikeout. Guy comes in in relief here. He does a nice job. It's a strikeout here as well. Left a bunch of Mavs on the base paths. You know, Hermitage is scrappy. If they just put a couple of runs together, you don't know. They have a runner on here, and he's going to get to second base on the uh, pickoff attempt by Freeman's catcher. So runner in scoring position, what do they do? Ground ball. That's a base hit. They're not going to send the runner coming around third. He'll stay there, but it set the table as Jordan O'Brien gets a single set the table for this. Great looking bunt by Sweet. He's tagged out, but run comes across to score. So Freeman once up five, nothing now, it's just five one. However, Beal pitched really well. Got out of trouble, mitigated the damage, strike out there and then up the middle. Nice range defensively, good pick at first. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. Freeman would add on runs from there and they win this one going away. 13 to four is your five. We've got some guys lacrosse when we return. Lightning suspended deep run versus Godwin before the break, so they were back at it to finish the battle at the home of the Eagles. Plus, Glenn Allen Ladies Soccer is back in action as they play host to Patrick Henry. Highlights are straight ahead. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. Dakar. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. Welcome back to Sports Wire to Lacrosse. We go suspended game due to lightning. Deep run in Godwin, so they're going to continue it with about two minutes, just under two minutes to go in the first half. Yes, deep run had a 6-0 lead, but I've seen lacrosse games where teams come back and Godwin would do just that. He shoots, he scores just before the half. It is Brody Milne doing the honor. So 6-1, we go to the third quarter now, and here comes deep run. Great pass inside, excellent feed, great finish as well. Grant, the price is right. Takes that one home and deep run, improves on their lead. Nobody's gonna stop this guy off the face off, all the way to the goal. He shoots, he scores, goes low. Number 88 doing the honors. Daniel Jarvis, just like that, it's 9-1 deep run later. Wildcats up 10-1, looking for even more. Firing, stop, save, and a butte. Keeper for Godwin doing a nice job holding. Holding them to goals. 10-1 after three. Holding them to less goals, I should say. We go to the fourth. Firing on net. Deep run says, I'll see your save, and I'll raise you one. Wildcats keeper was very good in this one. However, Godwin undeterred. Got to make something happen and fast. And they do just that. He shoots, he scores. Number 30, Tim Hedrick. 
One of the captains, oh my captain. He fires, finds the back of the net, but it was too much deep run in this one. Check this out right here. Nice defense for the loose ball, picked up by deep run. Fires and finds the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. Number 13, Quinn Doherty doing the magic there. And it's all about winning the faceoff. The lead of this. I mean, a blistering shot and a blistering four or five seconds flat. Wildcats put another one on the board and they win this one going away. 14 to two win over their rival Eagles. To ladies soccer we go at the home of Glen Allen. Jags with a winning record looking to keep it that way. Hosting the Patrick Henry Patriots and the Jags were formidable in this one. Firing on net, no, but the rebound, she shoots, she scores! Olivia Ewing, and you haven't heard the last of her. She puts the biscuit in the basket and the Lady Jags have a one nil lead. After a corner is corralled back by the Jags. Great pass inside and the finish to boot. She shoots, she scores. Mia Schweikert doing the honors this time. And just like the deuce on her jersey, they got a deuce on the scoreboard. It's 2-0 Jags. Not many opportunities for Patrick Henry, but this was one, and Glenn Allen's keeper came up stellar. Makes the save right there. Of course, kicked right to her. Still, got to make the stop. She gets a save, and then it was all attack mode for the Jags moving forward. Still first half. This is a pretty, pretty delivery. And she fires, finds a back net, she shoots, she scores. It's a brace for Olivia Ewing. Two goals on the night for her. And it's two, or now three nil. Glenn Allen, that would be your halftime score. So switching field sides, actually just before the half. I'm getting ahead of myself here. A lot of action in this one. Chance right here for her to have the hat trick and it goes off the post and bounces right to the keeper. Nearly three goals on the night. Okay, now second half, here we go. Jax looking for more. Really good looking cross right here. And then Corral firing, finding it back at she shoots, she scores. Maddie gets her name into the books as the Jags increase their lead to 4-0. There would be more where that came from. Still in attack mode. No stopping Glenn Allen on this night. Fresh off spring break, they didn't look like their fresh off spring break because Madison Mickleberry knocks that one through as well. She shoots, she scores. 5-0 Glenn Allen at that point. You get the clean sheet because that would be your final. Lady Jags pull up the win. It's back to the pits when we come back. Godwin goes for big time goals and a clean sheet against Prince George. And we hit the courts for a little guy's tennis as Deep Run takes on Tucker. That's next. Take out meals for just $12.99. Call it. Sherry Pearson. You are the sole surviving heir of the King of Montanopolis, and you are now worth $45 million. Be real? Of course it's not real. Come on. Having money isn't about luck. Like that takeout meal. Cook at home instead, you can save thousands a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire. Time for a little guy's tennis. Deep Run plays host to J.R. Tucker. Deep Run in the blue. Yeah, Tucker in the blue as well. Deep Run in the front court. This is Zach Fleischman taking on Shaw of Tucker, the number ones. Point for Fleischman. Excellent first set in this one. Fleischman on the serve. He had a great one. That one cannot be corralled. Point Fleischman. He was in control. Here's Shaw coming right back. He had a great serve as well. Really nice looking rally here. Fleischman would win the first set. 7-5. It's best out of three. So the, this first set, he drops it like a hot for a great winner right there. It was tremendous. In the second set, however, it was all Fleischman as he takes it 6-0 as this was one of the longest volleys and rallies that I had witnessed on this particular day. Back and forth they go. A lot of these points well earned by the number ones and that's why they're the number ones. But Fleischman eventually gets a victory and once again, he wins 7-5, 6-0 on the serve again. 
a lot of it had to do with his serve. Shaw gets the point right there. As I said, that first set, very, very competitive. Fleischman eventually would overpower him in the second. Speaking of overpowering serves, we go to the number twos. Grant Kruzma, I mean, his serve is cruel. Nice drop shot right there, and then he's gonna race back. Great lob attempt by Ketna, but the point would go to Kruzma. And he was, like I said, dominant from service. Setting up his second shot. Yeah, that would be out, good for the point. He would be tremendous in this one, win 6-0, 6-1 over Ketna. Andy Lee versus Nara. And in the backcourt is Deep Runs Andy. Big on Nara. Great volley here at number threes. That one just hit a little too long. And the point goes Andy's way. Andy was dominant in this one. Coming right in your living room. Nice return by J.R. Tucker, but it would go for not in this one. He can't get it over the net right there. Denied point. Goes to Andy again, and then smashing it with that overhand. And then nice to be good. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. Helps if you're both. He gets the win, 6-0, 6-0, straight two setters. Number fours, well, this would be a Tucker comeback. Sama taking on Andy Yawn. Yawn for deep run in the front court. That just goes a little bit wide. Had a terrific serve when he had command of it. But Sama had control of this match. Best match of all of them, really, by far. He wins this one 6-4, 7-5. But Deep Run wins the match 8-1. You're fine. Back to the pitch we go. It is Godwin taking on a Prince George. Both teams with winning records coming in. But the Eagles were the ones putting the pressure on early and often. What a great feed inside. Just a second touch, not quite enough. And the keeper gets in the way. And Somehow knocked away by the defense. Royals D and the Royals keeper were on point most of this night because it was an onslaught of epic proportions from the Godwin Eagles. That one just goes wide. Still first half, still no score. Eagles looking to change that. That shot, nice stop by the keeper. She dives in and makes a, makes a play there. She was busy. This has to go in. Somehow just misses. Oh. Caught in between the pass and the shot. Wasn't a bad pass. Godwin couldn't get a boot on it. Still no score. Still first half. Godwin firing. Godwin. Oh, it goes off the post. If they had VAR, that might have been in. They get the rebound. Keeper is there. So it's still no score. Godwin still trying to crack that nut open and get that opening goal to take a lead and that one finally works she shoots she scores just a little tappy tappy putting that one in riley shearer doing the honors in godwin with a one nil lead and there's a shearer family they're pretty happy about that one nicely done godwin was not finished on the offensive end not by a long stretch setting this one up and just stopped by the keeper, going from long distance, trying to find the cutting. Shearer for her second would-be goal. Godwin still in attack mode. They dominated possession. And when you dominate possession, you win games, especially when you shoot the ball like that. She shoots, she scores. Into the back of the net. Oh, captain, my captain, Riley Cassidy crushes one home. And the Eagles have landed up 2-0 the waning moments of the first half. We go to the second half, still up two. Eagles looking for more. Why not? Look at the footwork here, getting through a group of Royal defenders, and then a long shot firing. She shoots, she scores. Number eight makes it great. Campbell Emery. You kidding me? From distance. Eagles now way in front and they're not finished putting the ball in the back of the net. It's Shearer again, and it goes off the post. Oh, my. Off the woodwork, indeed. But Godwin had more opportunities where that came from, and they would make the most of them late. Firing 
Deflection. She shoots. She scores. That finds the back of the net. Fresh off the boot of Riley Cassidy. And the Eagles take care of business right after spring break. 6-0 is your final. They are your winner. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us, and you can always follow us on X and watch episodes on YouTube. I can't wait to see you next time on Sportswire.